Oh, there's a, see that there? There, we got one. Oh, he's running. Oh, it's cost an angler. Uh, take two here. People always ask me what colours of lures to use. But if you've got bite conditions, clear water, then you want something natural. But if it's like today, where it's dark, skies overhead, even though the sun's trying to get through, it's very dark at points today. I want something dark or vivid that's going to stand out. Same as you would do for your freshwater fishes, same rules apply. So I'm looking at pinks, and that's a pink Rooney's Ned there, or a pink laminate Senko there. That has worked. If you watch this video, you'll see me catch a fish on that today. Or maybe I'll go for a black Ned, even a yellow sort of mustardy coloured Ned. Or my favourite lure, a black sexy impact lure. You can go dark or bright, that's the key to the colour, but you might want to add a bit more attraction if the water's not too cold. So, you know, your Januarys and Februarys, you want less action, you want a rattle base in place more. But now in November, second week in November, we can still put a bit of action in there. So there's a Kitech uh, Shad, dark blue. Um, swim Impact, I think, I can't remember now, I'm useless. <laughs> Half asleep today. Then I've got a Swimming Crawl there in a dark green colour. You know, that'll stand out. Or a Berkeley, uh, the Deuce, I think that's called. You'll see in one of my uh, videos, uh, uh, HRF fishing, lure fishing for ass, uh, with the free rig. I use this for great success in the middle of winter. Um, yeah, it's a twin curly tail grub that. So think action, think dark, or think bright, and those things will get your lure noticed by a fish when you've got dark skies overhead or slightly coloured water or something like that. Rats don't like very coloured water. I've had them. They're generally right at your feet. But more times than not, you're peeing in the wind, to be honest. So I hope that helps you with your lure selection. Look for action. Look for dark colours to contrast the dark sky above. Well, it doesn't contrast it. It's just the fish can see it easier from below. Or look at bright to get it noticed. So following on from that theme, how am I going to fish it? Well, you know, I'm going for a very, very simple uh, rig here. I'm fishing over very shallow reefs. Um, I want uh, the lightest weight I can get away with to cast the distances that I'm fishing and I'm not fishing very far out. So this is probably somewhere in around seven grams max that. Got a little purple plastic bead there. You can use glass beads. Uh, you can use the jewellery beads I've shown you to get a rattle on it. And then I've already seen um, Mike Weathersby from Rufus from Rass uh, bumped into him down here. And he had a very difficult time of it. He had a couple of cagey bites. So I was thinking straight away, I, first thing I thought was I want a narrower hook. So I've gone with this weedless worm hook instead of the usual EWG hook, extra wide gape hook, thinking they'll get it in their mouths easier. I'm also thinking I need to put a bait through that he hasn't done already. And he told me what he'd already, bless him, uh, he'd put through already. So I thought, I'm going a Senko, a pink Senko. Um, he's never let me down. Very slight tinge to the water this time of year. There always is. He's never super, super clear like you get uh, in the middle of summer. Um, and this is how I rig it. So there's your simple Texas rig. And if you've not seen my channel before, you can find lots of ras fishing videos with lures. From I catch them all times of year. This is your bait holder section there. You see that little kink, 90 degree kink. You want to look at the length of that. You want to get your hook point and put it into the top of the middle of the bait, straight down, as far as that. You just have to be perfect, just guess it. And then pull it out of the belly of the bait, like that. Push it up over and around that hook keeper section bait keeper section i always call it a hook keeper for some reason measure it up with your thumb where the bend of the hook is push your bait through there and there you go that's texas rig but what we need to do is to expose it now and exposing is burying your hook point all you do is pull the bait towards the eye of the hook and drop it over the hook point and there you go there's your bait good to go that bait not that one in particular because it got smashed up the one i had has caught me a rass already today so keep watching this is where um I was having a discussion with Mike from Lurefish at the Rarash yesterday. We, have, we were discussing ras bites and when they hit them and when we strike. And didn't realise he actually did it different to me. Neither of us actually strike on that initial first pull. You can see my second down there, there's nothing going in. Uh, that initial first stun, unless the rod hoops right over. Sometimes they hook themselves first time, they must just hit the hook point. But usually a ras is stunning a bait. <coughs> on that first thump and 
more times than not, the second time it hits it, there'll be a rattle and the rod tip will just pull over and you'll just pull into the fish and hey ho. Uh, now I wait for the rod tip to pull over. Mike waits until he sees a line to start to tighten and then he hits it. So he's not, he, he's striking earlier than I am, which, which, you know, he catches plenty of wrasses. So experiment on the day. If you're missing bites, like if they're a bit tricky like they are today and you've had a tap, don't wait for the rod tip to pull over maybe. That's my thinking. And maybe just hit the line, start to tighten. That way you, you may well hook them anyway and they may well um, <clears throat> not get into cover. Not that I very often have trouble with grass getting into cover. Oh, there's a, see that then? There we got one. Oh, he's running. Little bite, not a huge fish, but we've got one. There, a beautiful fish. Uh, hopefully, you can see that without me falling into water. Right under our rod tip, that's a nice little fish, I'll take that. Fought very well. Uh, oh, that's not losing, we got it. Let's bring it up, that's not a bad little fish, I think. Put it down here. There we go. Oh, the pink Senko does it again. Very far out. Make sure we're filming this. So yeah, there we go. Little light lead, little pink Senko. Look at the colours on this one. This is not a bad fish at all. It was quite a tentative bite, really, wasn't it? You can see the blue with the lips. I'm wondering. I squashed the barb on this hook. But it went in very deep, didn't it? I'm wondering if. Uh, that slimmer hook and they were going to get that bite and I struck it nice and early yeah that wrasse is a good couple of pounds they're beautiful coloured aren't they stunning creatures so I'm very happy with that took these in a lamb called a wrasse in six months and I'm just going to pop it in over here so instead of putting it out in the net I'm just going to hand release it behind us here into that rock pool and he'll swim around there and find his way out so I'm just using a very the lightest comb weight or or egg sinker in this case an egg sinker i can get away with because the heavier the sinker you use when you're fishing in and around this stuff uh the more they get snagged the lighter weight tends to settle rather than dig in to uh structure as much yeah um, you need to <coughs> maybe have enough weight to get you to the bottom and cast the distance that you want to cast well i'm not casting very far here at all am i Try something different. I would like it that way. So I'm just Texas rigging this curly toe grub. Right, here's the curly toe grub uh, lure for you there. Made by a company called BMU and I saw some off AliExpress. And uh, yeah, they're a nice color. I can't find this color. It's difficult to find this kind of color um, anywhere else but AliExpress. That's why I buy some lures off AliExpress just simply because I cannot find them in the color or style that I want, the size I want. It's a nice thin profile there, sort of almost Senko thickness there, so a ras can get that easily into his mouth. Got some ribbing on here, you can stuff some scent in. Well, this is where your hook's going to go in there, and quite a long tail. Probably prefer one a little bit slimmer, that'll straighten out as it swims along. See little circles on there, it's got red glitter and blue glitter in it. And uh, it's a darker lure, um, as I was speaking about earlier in the video. Darker lures can sometimes work so. Yeah, hope that helps. I'll put a link in the description. Let's see. Oh, there's a bite. Yeah, got one. He's not big. But we've got another fish. He's pulling a bit. No, that was a very strange bite. Yeah, he's just uh, twisting up a bit. He's not a big fish. But we do have one, don't we? We can keep get him in. So, <sighs> that's two fish. Yeah, very small one. We'll, we'll hand line this one. He's a tacker. But it proves the baits work, doesn't it? You know, that's a, that's a new bait. We're up over the water, so if I dropped him, he's fine. He's not too heavy. It's gonna gonna hurt him with his own weight. Would hurt him. You can see the teeth on them. God, there we go. Uh, a little gorgeous ballon ras, orange colour that one. Mm -hmm. 